Oh, little blush shark, I worship you, I want to live with you. Hello there, James Stephanie Sterling here. I've become quite interested in the Nintendo eShop on Switch and the sheer awfulness of the shovelware that's on it. Uh, plus, nothing really happened in the news this past week. Also, I've got some sort of horrible mouth infection. Have you heard, by the way, about that so-called shameless rip-off? Uh, that was on the Nintendo eShop of The Last of Us that was taken down. Sony copyright claimed trailers for it and it's highly suspected that because it happened at the same time they've done a similar takedown to the game on the eShop itself. So that's what we're going to talk about today, largely assuming that Sony had a hand in removing it from the shop as well as uh, on YouTube. And well, I've got some thoughts about that because I'm sort of not happy with the situation. Read on to find out. On the last installment of this show, we talked about the Nintendo eShop shovelware problem and how asset flips and other such borderline scam non-games have utterly drenched the Switch's digital storefront. One game we paid attention to in particular was The Last Hope Dead Zone Survival, one of the most intellectually insulting, dishonest and downright lazy games I've ever seen in my life. It became a controversial newsmaker earlier this year for a truly cynical reason, with gaming news sites labelled it a shameless ripoff of Naughty Dog's The Last of Us, despite, DESPITE the fact even calling it that was giving it entirely too much fucking credit. Mere hours after my video where I discussed The Last Hope, The Last of Us publisher Sony stepped in to have the game removed from sale on the grounds of copyright infringement. While there's no way I deserve credit for what is a mere coincidence, I'm going to take credit anyway because grasping onto flimsy shreds of relevance helps me sleep at night. So congratulations to Stephanie Sterling for single-handed taking down the last hope. Well done, girl. I truly am the last hope for quality and decency in gaming. <laughs> and the, uh, dead zone of, um, survival. Or something. Anyway, after dirtying up the already trash-soaked European Switch eShop for weeks and enjoying far more notoriety than it deserved, The Last Hope Dead Zone Survival has had its listing taken down, with a 404 error message and a sexy picture of peppy hair left in its place. Uh. Additionally, trailers for the game have been removed from YouTube with copyright claims from Sony listed as the reason. If you bought the game, you can still play it and as someone who still has the horrible little thing saved on my Switch, I look forward to selling my console on eBay for thousands of dollars, like all those people who kept a copy of PT on their PS4s did. I mean, it's definitely gonna be the exact same situation, right? I've been utterly a Hold by the game's existence, but I'm actually annoyed by the news that Sony had it taken down. Not because I necessarily want to see it stay, but because Sony asserting it infringes on copyright lends it far, far more credibility than it ever fucking deserved. As I've stressed whenever I've talked about it, The Last Hope is not a ripoff of The Last of Us. It's a threadbare zombie asset flip with a literally the only in-game allusion to Naughty Dog's work, being a character model for the useless little girl you escort, who serves an admittedly close aping of The Last of Us's Ellie. Beyond that, The Last Hope has skated by on a vaguely similar title and some eShop artwork to do something far lazier than plagiarise. It pretended to plagiarise for attention. It wasn't trying to trick you into thinking it's The Last of Us. It wanted you to know it wasn't, and it banked instead on the incredulity and the curiosity that the boldness of such a concept attracted. The anonymous seller of this piece of shit essentially meta-gamed fraud. More than simply swindled customers out of their money, it swindled the community and press outlets into talking about it because the idea of a Switch game audaciously copying The Last of Us sounds like news. As soon as you play it, though, you realise you've been had. 
Like I say, it's a bargain basement asset flip. It's got about half an hour of content at best, and that's not including the soft locking I described in my brief summary last week. Yeah, the game is very easy to turn into an unwinnable situation because you have an incredibly limited and finite ability to fight zombies in the first place, and the resources you have are meant to last you the entire fucking game. You've got a stamina meter that never regenerates on its own. And I mean, it never comes back. You need it to run, you need it to attack with your baseball bat, and when it's gone, it's quite genuinely gone for fucking good. The only way to get it back is to use one of the only three stamina items you can get in the whole game, all three of which are found right near the beginning, and each of which only replenish a tiny, almost useless morsel of stamina. You get access to a few guns partway into proceedings, but like with stamina, there is a limited number of bullets, and if they're gone, you're fucked. You can outrun the zombies even by walking, but as soon as you meet not Ellie, the four-foot burden who moves at a pace so leisurely as to be suicidal, you soon find that straying too far from her is just going to fuck you. The little dickhead stands completely still and cowers when zombies get to within two or three fucking meters of her, and she will not move until every zombie within the radius is killed. She'll happily squat there and let the game selection of four stock zombie character models batter her to death without so much as taking one single solitary step forward to protect herself. The only saving grace is that she warps to you if you can make it to a building before she dies, so if you can make it to your next destination in time, you'll mitigate some of this bullshit. In fact, you can even use this to undo her dying so long as you get into a building before the game itself resets. Because this game is an awful broken piece of shit that literally doesn't exist to be played. So yeah, if you're out of bullets and stamina, you're literally fucked for the whole game. You can't beat it. You will get to a point where you can't reach a building in time to respawn her. If you kill more zombies than you ought to, and the only way to do that is to kill as few as possible and hope for the best, you'll have softlocked yourself and will need to start the entire thing over again from scratch. There's an insipid lockpicking minigame that lags a little and doesn't pause the action and cannot be quit once it's started, so if a zombie spots you while you're trying to lockpick, upon completion you'll come back to find yourself instantly murdered. Adorably, they put crafting into the game, but you can only craft two Molotov cocktails near the end of it, and that's literally it. It's so completely fucked and insulting, and whoever had the sheer fucking nerve to put it on the eShop for 10 fucking quid was smart enough to make himself anonymous lest they risk feeling one iota of personal and professional fucking shame. Would you also believe me if I said it just straight up plays like ass? That the controls are awkward, it's glitchy as fuck? That there's a door toward the end of the game that can only be opened by pressing the E key? The E key on the fucking switch! I'd call it fucking incompetent, but to say that is to imply someone made an effort, that someone failed but tried to make a good thing. This isn't incompetent. This is malicious. This is dishonest bone idle country from a fraudulent hack. Hell, the very narrative premise of this dumpster fire has absolutely nothing to do with The Last of Us either. It borders on incomprehensible word salad and it's completely off its fucking rocker. In a stunning revelation, the government has unveiled startling disclosures regarding it. Oh, uh, according to government sources, a select group of individuals. Uh, oh, their unprecedented journey unveiled a world plague by an unprecedented crisis, a devastating zombie outbreak. Shockingly, this catastrophe with the world plunged into an abyss of unprecedented calamity. The surviving populace now grapples with extreme adversities, including rampant starvation. In response to this chilling revelation, revelation the government has swiftly initiated a comprehensive plan of investigation. Anyway, the point is, they send a man back in time to the future just to see how bad the zombie outbreak gets that's it that's it just to see how bad the zombie outbreak gets that's why he's sent forward in time S fuck's sake gibberish 
complete fucking gibberish. Unsurprisingly, of course, it turns out that Brian is the future father of Not Ellie, a revelation given to players shortly after encountering her that literally has no plot significance whatsoever. I feel like I'm insulting both myself and my audience by even giving the writing this level of critical analysis. I mean, I shouldn't even be calling it writing. It doesn't deserve this. Again, it wasn't even really designed to be played, let alone have its plot thought about for more than the second or two it takes to laugh at how bizarrely it's written. The depths of laziness on display have managed to stun even me, somebody who made a career of looking at the most low effort garbage the world of shovelware and asset flips has to offer. The Last Hope is so bereft of artistic merit or a desire to try, it doesn't want to copy The Last of Us, it skipped out on all the hard work of ripping Naughty Dog off and settled instead on simply making people think it did. And it worked, and that's the sick thing. I wrote a whole bloody review about this game because everybody was talking about it. I not only dedicated a segment on last week's show to it, I've now done all of us the indignity of making an entire fucking episode about the bloody thing. Even knowing what the particular trick of this scam is, I've fallen into the trap with my eyes wide open because I simply cannot resist the bait. It's genius. The most lazy fucking example of genius gaming may have ever seen, but still... Genius. So indeed, the game isn't incompetent, despite how broken, clumsy, and pathetic it is, because you're only incompetent if you're failing your intended goals. I mean, that's not strictly true. But you know, incompetence often comes from a place of sincerity. On the contrary, The Last Hope has proven stunningly competent in its goal of getting free promotion and attention for putting in zero fucking effort. The only reason I found out about it was our lovely subtitler Laura found it and talked to me about it in our award-unwinning podcast podcast pod position, and shortly after sites like Eurogamer and that picked it up too. All of us were laughing our asses off at the game at first, but who was having the real giggle? It was the chuckle fuck that uploaded the game. So far, none of the news outlets have pointed out what I did about what makes it truly fucking despicable. As I said in my review of the game on thegymquisition.com, it's one thing to rip another game off, but to only pretend to rip one off for attention while doing something so threadbare it doesn't even clear the low bar of plagiarism truly is deceptive on a whole other level. The Last Hope Dead Zone Survival is not a forgery of The Last of Us, it's a forgery of a forgery. It's something so completely fucking fraudulent that it sells the idea of a counterfeit and delivers instead a handful of minimally functional assets structured just barely enough to resemble half an hour of navigable gameplay. So that's why I'm a little galled that Sony did what it did. Look, the game was a disgusting, dishonest asset flip that was charging down near a tenner and it deserves to be gone, but not for copyright infringement, I don't think. Copyright infringement is fucking aspirational for this game. I mean, hell, I'd actually be tempted to argue that whether or not I feel Nintendo should have removed the game, doing so on copyright grounds might actually be one of the most spurious ways of doing it. I'd maybe even say, for the partial sake of sounding a bit controversial, removal for copyright infringement is actually unfair to the game. After all, to legit infringe on copyright, The Last Hope would have had to have fucking tried. It's why I've been so surprised Sony stepped in on this situation at all. Because besides the fact this is such small potatoes, it's amazing anybody at PlayStation took notice, I'm not sure the company would have a legitimate case if it ever went to court. As objectively as possible, I find myself asking what intellectual property The Last Hope act actually infringes on. Ignore for a second that it's trying to make you think it's a copy of The Last of Us. What material is in The Last Hope that makes it any more of an infringement than, say, Transmorphers or Independence's Day or any of those other mockbuster movies The Asylum makes to trick elderly relatives into buying kids the wrong film for Christmas? One look at the game in action reveals that nothing conceptually has been taken from Naughty Dog's work. The zombies are standard stock zombies, clearly added from some store-bought asset pack. They're not mushroom zombies, they look and behave nothing like mushroom zombies, they're just typical uninspired groaning shamblers. The gameplay isn't really similar at all outside of them both being largely third person shooter affairs, with its bizarre stamina meter, lack of stealth or cover and flip chic visual style, not a single screenshot could be confused with the PlayStation exclusive series. The crafting menu looks a little similar but not in a way that would legally constitute infringement, in fact in terms of gameplay there are other games out there way more directly in 
inspired by The Last of Us as opposed to this, which has been cobbled together with no creative inspiration at all. The best you could argue in a court of law is the artwork used on the eShop and the character model for the girl who is, by the way, called Eve and Eva at different points in The Last Hope because of course she fucking is. I'm not sure either of those constitute copyright infringement because neither one is an actual copy of either Naughty Dog's art or the character of Ellie. They don't contain actual assets taken from the game this fraudster's pretending to ape, and therefore if I were a lawyer arguing in defence of the hack, I'd argue quite strongly that Sony would have a stronger case against media protected as parody than against this. The argument really comes down to whether or not something like Not Ellie here has been altered enough to prove legally distinct from Ellie Classique. Now, I don't know. It's fucking brazen, I'll give it that. It's very clear who she's supposed to visually emulate, but is she legally indistinct? Is she so close as to legitimately threaten Sony's business interests and potentially scam people into buying The Last Hope under the false impression they bought the big budget PlayStation exclusive to AAA production on the Switch? I wouldn't exactly stake my reputation on saying Sony's case is flimsy, but I would suggest the Asylum start consulting their lawyers if it isn't. I mean, I suppose it's a moot point if we just care about the results. I'm not even saying it's a slippery slope that this situation is a sign of bad and abusive things to come, I don't really care. My only genuine offence taken is the one I already described, that The Last Hope doesn't deserve the credit of being called a copyright infringement. But still, the situation overall really has gotten under my skin a bit. I'm just so genuinely fucking insulted at a game so low effort that plagiarism was a step up. It's truly a new low, and of course I'm, I'm still talking about it fuck's sake. I guess also it's just sad that it took such an extreme as Sony throwing its big legal dick around to get just this one tiny isolated instance of quality control on the fucking Nintendo eShop. As we examined in last week's video, the eShop is packed with scams, tricks and games so bereft of content they could barely even be called games and it's all happening on the watch of a company once famed for its seal of quality. For its assurances that the titles officially appearing on Nintendo hardware were verified and certified as valid products. This is so far from the case now that it's fucking abysmal, and I wish Nintendo had enough pride in an online storefront that's broken and laggy at the best of times to at least clear out games like Pyramid Slots, a game that I must stress like I did last week actually deactivates your Joy-Cons, forcibly turning the controllers off when you play it in docked mode. I mean, not to bag on them again, wait, no, scratch that. To bag on them again, PixArts is a fucking scourge on the Nintendo eShop. That fucking game where poorly rendered zombie assets shuffle left and right over stock photographs while you're shoot them with a gun so poorly implemented there's not even a targeting system and you have to fucking guess I played that over a week ago and I still cannot believe it's a real thing this kind of shit has historically been the bread and butter of my career and yet the world of asset flips still finds ways to make my jaw drop as it did when I looked over the headache inducing just barely working universally shitty games Pixar to shout out with alarming frequency pumping out dozens and dozens of what could almost be called fake games over periods of weeks I mean, PixArts were the fuckers who uploaded the notorious Hammer 2 asset pack to the Switch's storefront and called it a day. For those who might not remember, Hammer 2 Reloaded is a pre-made Unity engine game intended, like all such games, to serve as the skeleton of an original IP that developers are meant to put their own artwork and mechanics on top of. But the era of Steam Greenlight saw dozens of so-called developers rename the asset and upload it as their original work. Or in many cases, as is the case here, they didn't even bother renaming it. And call me a moral guardian if you must, but I don't think the eShop, or any other shop for that matter, should need another corporation's legal team stepping in to stop games sold in such a dishonest, pathetic, and downright disgusting manner. I've always known the eShop was a cum swamp, and I'd been meaning to talk about it on this show for ages, but it wasn't until I saw that companies like PixArts and Red Deer had been parading around on it, pumping out multiple sub-slaughtering grounds quality scams all week, that I truly stepped back and appreciated the magnitude of the shit situation. Something about the last Hope Dead Zone survival has thrown what remained for sale into sharp and dismal relief. It, and forgive me for saying what I'm about to say, it rankles me. I don't mind telling you. There. Yeah, I said it. May God and the baby Jesus forgive me for what I said, but, and I'll say it again by cunt's sake. I am rankled. <laughs> Fucking 
serious on the mouth infection. It tastes like coins and blood in there. Um, that was today's episode. Uh, I am going to go and lie down and feel sad about it uh, using my soft IKEA shark for comfort. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, as usual, I've enjoyed making it as I have all these uh, recent videos. Uh, I hope to see you next week, maybe, if you want. No pressure. You know, I'll be here thanking God for me and all that. Uh, yeah. Yeah.